In this video, we're going to talk about acid nomenclature. So we're going to talk both about writing formulas and names for acids. So first, we need to determine if the substance is an acid. Now, the way that we tell something is an acid is if it starts with hydrogen. If it starts with hydrogen and is followed by either a nonmetal or a polyatomic ion, it's an acid. So when you're designating whether it's ionic, molecular, or an acid, always look to see if it starts with a hydrogen starts with the hydrogen, we can label it as an acid. So then what we have to do is we have to look at the anion. Now the anion is whatever comes after the hydrogen. It could be a nonmetal anion, it could be a polyatomic ion. So we look for the anion and we name it. So when we name the anion, remember it's either going to end in IDE, ATE, or ITE. So IDE are going to be nonmetal anions, with the exceptions of cyanide and hydroxide. Those are the only two polyatomics that end in IDE. And then the other polyatomics will end in ate or ite, like sulfate and sulfite. So we determine if it's an acid, so we look for the compound starting with an H. Then we look at the anion and we name it. Once you've named the anion, that's the most important thing, is naming the anion. And once you've named the anion, then you can name the acid because there are these three rules that we use to name the acid. So if your anion ends in IDE, so say it's chloride, just Cl. If it's chloride, the acid becomes hydrochloric acid. So we use the stem in front of IDE and we put it in this blank. So chloride goes to hydrochloric acid. Ite goes to us. The way that you can remember that is I and us. So ite would go to whatever us acid. So nitrite will go to nitrous acid. The only exception is sulfur and phosphorus. So sulfite, we actually put sulfur in the blank. So sulfite goes to sulfurous acid. Phosphite goes to phosphorus acid. Otherwise, it's whatever's in front of the ite gets put in this blank. And then eight goes to ick. So you can remember that you ate something icky. So for example, nitrate will become nitric acid. So notice that the name of the acid is all based on the anion. So once you name the anion, you can figure out the name of the acid. So id goes to hydro blank ick acid. Ite goes to us, I and us. And eight goes to ick. You ate something icky. So we're going to look at some examples of writing the names of acids. So this first example, this is an acid because it starts with hydrogen. It doesn't matter how many hydrogens we have, all that matters is that it starts with hydrogen. Hydrogen is the very beginning. So what we can do is we can actually put a line right after hydrogen and everything else that's over here, that's my anion. So this is just nitrogen, so as an anion it's nitride. And so since it's nitride, it ends in IDE, it becomes hydronitric acid. So again, ide goes to hydroic. So nitride, hydronitric acid. So we look at number two. Right? We put a line after hydrogen here. Everything else is my anion. So my anion here is NO2. Okay, well, NO2, this is why you need to know your polyatomics. NO2 is nitrite, I and us. So nitrite goes to nitrous acid. Okay, looking at number three again, I'm going to put a line after the H here. HNO3, my anion is NO3. NO3 is nitrate. So nitrate becomes nitric acid. Notice it's all based on the anion endings here. Then we look at four, H2SO4. I hope this four should be a subscript. H2SO4, so we put a line after H. SO4 is my anion. Remember, these are ions. That's why these are polyatomics, because these are ions. H is positive, SO4 is minus 2. So SO4 is sulfate. 8 goes to ick. You ate something icky. Sulfate becomes sulfuric acid. So notice again, it's all about naming the anion. Now we're writing formulas. What we have to do now is we're looking at the name. So acetic acid. Well, ick comes from eight. So this comes from acetate. Now acid means it starts with an H. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 
both of my ions. I'm going to put H plus and I'm going to put acetate, right? H plus and C2H3O2 minus, and you crisscross. Even though it's not ionic, you still are going to crisscross because hydrogen is positive and then your anion is always going to be negative. So when it comes to writing uh, formulas for acids, you're still going to do the crisscross method. So H plus and C2H3O2 minus becomes HC2H3O2. Notice we still put the H at the beginning because H at the beginning tells me that it's an acid. So then for number two, we have hydronitric acid. Well, hydroic means that it comes from ide. So this comes from nitride. So I'm going to put H plus because I know it's acid. And I'm going to look at my periodic table. Nitride is nitrogen. That's N3 minus. So we have H plus, N3 minus. We crisscross. We get H3N. So hydronitric acid is H3N. And then we have sulfurous acid. Like us. It's it and us. So sulfurous acid comes from sulfite. So again, think back to your polyatomics. Acid starts with H plus. Sulfite is SO3 2 minus. So when we crisscross, it becomes H2SO3. So when it comes to naming and writing formulas for acids, it's all about the anion. The anion determines the name of the acid. And then when you're writing the formulas, you're going to crisscross like we did with ionic compounds. So it's important that you still know your polyatomics and that you use your periodic table to figure out the charge of nonmetals, such as nitrogen in this case.